Today, we're gonna to be talking about seven hamster cage mistakes you could be currently making. Number one, and the most obvious, cage size. When you walk into the majority of pet stores, you're going to see cages like critter trails, habit trails, and tiny tails, all of which have one thing in common. They're too small. But why would the pet store sell something if it's not suitable for the pet? Well, this is both the pet store and the brand's fault. Hamster enclosures have not evolved since hamsters have come into the pet trade. This is unfortunate because of the new information that we have on hamsters that leads us to believe that hamsters really do need a lot of space. And while we are slowly seeing more brands making larger hamster enclosures, there are still brands who are making really tiny hamster enclosures because they are focused on one thing only, and that is making money. The smaller the cage that they can produce, that means the more likely it is to fit into every single type of household. Because if it's only this large, most households are going to have a space that is going to fit something that large rather than something bigger than that. And the more households that can fit that size means more money because more people are going to be able to get hamsters then. I personally think it's best to aim for at least 800 square inches of floor space. This size is going to allow you to at least put the minimum enrichment a hamster is going to need in order to thrive. And of course, even larger is better. Number two, bedding depth. Hamsters are natural ground dwellers and in the wild, they can create burrows as deep as three feet. Unfortunately, when buying most pet store cages, they are typically wire cages with a pan base, and these pan bases usually most commonly have a pan depth of about three inches, and even if you fill this all the way to the top, it just simply isn't deep enough for a hamster to create those burrows. This is one of the reasons why I really highly would recommend aquarium styled enclosures with just the ventilation at the top. This way it's going to allow you to put as much bedding as you really want to, which is going to allow a hamster to then be able to make burrows. A lot of people may say, well, my hamster doesn't like burrowing, so I don't give them that much bedding because it's a waste. But it's really unfair to the hamster because there could be many factors as to why they aren't burrowing. The first thing could be the type of substrate you're using. There are many different types of hamster beddings out there and some are better than others when it comes to holding a really good burrow. The other thing is your bedding might not be compact enough. A lot of the times people will just throw the bedding in there and it's really, really fluffy, and eventually the hamster is just gonna walk on it, it's gonna flatten down, and it's actually not as much as you thought you put in there. This is because you're actually supposed to be compressing the bedding down as you're adding it. Um, when the bedding is compacted, it's a lot easier for the hamster to create a burrow because it's going to hold a lot better. Another factor is that some species of hamsters, such as dwarfs, prefer to overtake burrows that have already been created so it does help to put in some burrow starters some different tubes and tunnels straight into the ground or some kind of peep away type of hideouts this can help them get started with burrowing and if your hamster still doesn't want to burrow that doesn't mean that you should take away all of the bedding because it may take your hamster a couple of months or weeks to decide that they would like to create a burrow now, if you currently have a wire cage and are wanting to provide more bedding than you're able to, but you're not able to currently get an aquarium styled enclosure, then what I would personally suggest is taking either some cardboard, plexiglass, or coroplast and creating a border around the wire. That way you can make it as high as you want and you can fill the bedding up more without it spilling over at the edges of the bars. From my own experiences, I have noticed that most hamsters aren't going to burrow until they've been given at least 10 inches or more of bedding. So I highly would recommend trying to strive for that much bedding. Number three, your enclosure is too empty. This is something that I personally was guilty of way back when as well. I used to just set the enclosure up and put a couple of things like a house, some chew toys, maybe a bridge, and that was it. And the enclosures were just so empty 
and so boring, and I was always confused why my hamsters were still bored. Typically, we want to create a semi-crowded enclosure for a hamster. This is what's going to make them feel um, most safe. Make sure you're not crowding the enclosure so they can't walk. You should when creating your hamster cage enclosure setup. Think about different pathways your hamster can take in the enclosure while putting things in there. Don't forget, filling up your hamster's enclosure doesn't have to be a super expensive thing to do. Think about the things that you can use at home. Do you have any Tupperware containers or glass dishes that you could use to put other substrates in? Do you have toilet paper tubes or different cardboard tubes you can use for the hamsters to go through? Do you have cardboard boxes that you can customize and cut holes in so that it can be like a little maze inside for the hamster to go through? Number four, location. Make sure to keep your hamster out of any direct sunlight and away from heaters. These things can cause the hamster's enclosure to heat up to dangerous temperatures that can put your hamster into heat stroke. Make sure to also keep your hamster's enclosure away from direct drafts such as AC vents, open windows, or fans as these could cause your hamster to become too cold. Make sure wherever you're keeping your hamster's enclosure that they are still having a regular day night light cycle as just because hamsters are nocturnal does not mean that they should live in complete darkness as the regular day night light cycle does help them to regulate when they are supposed to get up and go to bed. Number five, unsafe materials. As we've already learned, unfortunately, pet stores do sell many products that end up being unsafe for your pet. And this goes for every type of species. It is important before putting any type of new accessory into your hamster's enclosure that you do the research to make sure that it actually is safe for them. Things like fabric items, salt licks, mineral chews, edible logs, as well as hamster balls are just some of the many things that pet stores sell that are unsafe for hamsters. Number six, stilts. Like we mentioned earlier, hamsters are burrowers. So because of this, if you decide to put a heavy object just flat on bedding and your hamster decides to burrow underneath it, there is a high chance that the hamster could be crushed when they decide to burrow underneath the object. But we can easily prevent this by doing two things. One, either putting heavy objects on platforms or two, putting heavy objects on stilts. Both of these things are fairly simple. You can either buy your own platforms or you can make your own platforms using some safe wood and dowels. And if you wanna make stilts, all you really have to do is get some dowels, cut them to the length that you want them to, and you can use some non-toxic Elmer's glue to attach them to the products you want to hold up. Then if your hamster decides they want to burrow under something with stilts, they're not gonna get hurt. And last but not least, number seven, lids. By not having a lid on your enclosure, you risk your hamster escaping, which can be a very dangerous situation because we all know how small hamsters are. They can get into any nook and cranny and become lost forever. This has happened to many hamsters before, and it becomes an even more dangerous situation when you have pets in your home who could potentially harm and kill your hamster. All enclosures, no matter the height of them, need a lid because hamsters are great escape artists. Even when you think they can't climb something, they're going to figure out a way to do it. Lids also help keep out little hands as well as any pets that are interested in your hamster. And this is going to protect your hamster at the end of the day. You can very easily make your own lid if you don't currently have one just by using some wood and mesh and a staple gun or you can buy pre-made lids at the pet store. So those are the seven cage mistakes you possibly could be making. And hopefully this video has helped you learn so that you're able to fix them and have a happier hamster. So I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.